Welcome to the Academy for Teachers Masterclass on How Round is a Cube. This is a sideways interpretation of Euler's famous polyhedra formula with James Tanton. Thank you, James, for coming in. I'm Wayne Tobias. I've been teaching math and computer science for 16 years. I'm currently at Williamsburg Prep High School. And I came to teaching after working in the investment banking industry for many years. And at 9-11, uh, my office was destroyed. Uh, at that point, I also decided that I would do something more meaningful with my time, and I decided to become a teacher. It's still, I think, the best decision that I ever made. And part of the reason why is that I have a lot of kids come to me and they tell us, they say, I can't do math. And I love helping to learn, to help, helping to teach them that they can. And when they have that aha moment that we all are familiar with, when they come to Kumbaya. So I'm a proud fellow of the Academy for Teachers. It's master classes. I find them to be inspirational. After each class, I've always brought the ideas back to my classroom and shared them with my students. Being an Academy fellow makes me part of a community of great teachers. I have the honor of introducing James Tanton. And James is an ambassador for the Mathematical Association of America. He's also the chair of the advisory council for the National Museum of Mathematics and a founder of the Global Math Project. So a lot of um, good stuff going on. If you know James's books or his work, you might be familiar with his intellectual play and sense of discovery. So whether he's reverse engineering how to flatly fold a fitted sheet, which is amazing, or if he's talking about the uh, uh, di dihedral angles intercepted by spheres, which we'll be finding more about. He's constantly asking questions. And as a teacher, I've always taught my students that the best use of our time is in asking good questions. And James does exactly that, which I appreciate. James is not the only star of this masterclass, however. It is also my honor to introduce the 23 teachers here today who were selected from many applicants. This is an impressive group with advanced degrees in math, education, law, physics, anthropology, documentary film. So they teach grades six through 12, public schools, charter schools, independent private schools. Good mix. Our teachers subjects range from algebra to calculus, computer science, ICT rooms, AP classes, and even music theory. But that's not all. Our teachers also help with extracurricular activities such as swim teams, ice hockey, women in STEM education, school musicals, and robotics, to name a few. There's a lot of teaching experience here today as well. We've been in the classroom between three and 47 years. The total number of years we have teaching is 314 or pi times 10 squared. We teach between 22 and 150 kids each. The number of children who know our names is 1,558. And that's this year alone. So your real audience today, James, is not just the teachers in front of you, but all of those kids. Because the teachers here will in some way share with them what we take away from you. The ripple effect of the master classes is huge. So thank you, Dr. Tanton, for being here today. Thanks to my fellow teachers for teaching. And with that, let the master class begin. James, take it away. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you so much. I did actually have a chance to meet Wayne last night just by happenstance. And he asked me, how would I like to be introduced? And I said to him jokingly, I'd like something deeply moving, please. Thinking, you know, he's going to intimidate the fellow. That was deeply moving. Thank you, Wayne. That was really, that's a lovely introduction. So thank you so much. I'm really touched and I'm really truly honored to be here. What a, what a group. Wow, you are the powerhouse. You're, you're bringing math joy to the world. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right, so yes, I'm going to talk about how round is a cube. Um, but before I do that, we've had, let me do yet a third introduction for the day, because there's one very important question I need to ask this group. You have a major impact. I heard you, you're influencing over a thousand kids, like right now. In which case, I need to be sure, is everyone here on this call? ...aware that there is an international... Everyone's back. Okay, sorry, I, I, everyone froze on me. Are you aware there's an international salute to mathematics? Yes or no? Oh, 
Evans, Evans, all right, hang on. Hang on, I'll be back. Excuse me. This is the little interlude that we get as you all are thinking about how terrific that introduction was. So you get to just let it settle in a little bit and Renee, here he this, comes this, back. This when, Renee, this is when you sing that song. Oh, that's right, I forgot. Oh, good thing James is back. Um, I'll be more ready to sing that song the next time. Well, well, that was a rough start. Okay, I'm going <laughs> to assume the answer is we're ready for the international math salute. Are we? The answer is yes now. Sure. All right, here goes. This is, this is truly the salute to mathematics. I'm not making this up, and it's kind of weird. I know it's dinner time for most of you, so you need to... All your snacks, your drinks, and coffees, and all the rest. You need your arms. Okay, arms out front. Are we together? Yes. Then it goes right hand over left hand. Right over left. That's the hard part. Right hand over left hand. Then the salute gets weird. You go palm to palm. Yep, well done. And you just wiggle your little fingers. Then you wiggle your thumbs. Then you wiggle your little fingers again. And then when you're ready, just come on back. What? What? Should I do it again? Okay, yes, I'll do it again. I'll do it from a different angle. Maybe you sit from sideways will help. So this, I'm truly not making this up. This is a salute to mathematics. If you Google international math salute, you will find it. Arms out front, right hand over left hand. Okay, palm to palm. Wiggle the little fingers, wiggle the thumbs, wiggle the little fingers again. And then when you're ready, just come on back. Hmm, hmm. Well, okay, well, there we are. Um, feel free to, to unmute yourself anytime. We are all friends. There's no need to add a math salute. Uh oh. Okay. Did I just freeze on you? You all just froze on me again. What is going on with my internet today? I'm so sorry. All right. Okay. All right. Well, let's, let's make this the start to a problem song. There's actually a very good math lesson in what I just did. Um, I've given you something, something that's kind of like gimmicky, I know, but it's actually really got a good intellectual lesson here. So I've given you a problem. The problem is how do you do the salute? In fact, you've got a problem with an answer. You know what the answer is meant to be. So what's a good strategy in math and in life? If you've got a problem and you think you know what the answer should be, what could you do? Go backwards. Exactly, work backwards. It's such a simple idea. It's, it's so simple, people forget how powerful it is. It's a very powerful idea. So let me help you out. We start with the answer and let's see if we can reverse engineer this. You ask yourself, well, where did this come from? Well, it must've come from that. Okay, so far so good. Then you ask, well, where did that come from? It must've come from my fingers being unfurled. Okay, now I bet that feels very strange and different. So I've just half helped you. We start at the end and we got to this funny feeling middle position. So my challenge to you now is, can you start at the beginning and somehow get to that same funny feeling middle position? And then you should be able to come back. So I've given half a hint right now. Okay, some people are nodding. Some people say that is actually helping some people. If you're like me, I'm really slow at these things. Probably it's not helping you right now. Okay, some people are getting it. Oh my goodness, what a team, what a team. Okay, all right, let's make the following deal. I won't give it away just yet, but if you want me to give it away, I will. Just ask me at the end during a little question period and I'll give it away. But, you know, while I'm working for the next 55 minutes and I'm being particularly boring, feel free, just like secretly under the table, just practice this you know, out of, off camera so you just amuse yourself and then, by, then the time will pass and I'll be ready to go. All right, so let's have like a deal. Deal, deal, excellent, all right. Um, have I the ability to share my screen? It looks like I do, fabulous. So let me share my screen, because I actually like doing mathematics in real time on a piece of paper or whiteboard or chalkboard, whatever. Are you seeing how round is a cube on the screen right now? Yes. Are you seeing my hands under the screen? Yes, yes, all right. Let's talk about this. So first of all, let me ask a, a general question. 
if I were to go outside and had to draw a circle on the ground, what could I actually do to draw a circle? A big circle in, the, in my backyard just out there. What could I do? Well, one thing I do is I could take a stick and put it in the ground. So plant a stick in the ground. Great. Oops, camera, come on, focus camera. And I can then take a rope, pull the rope taut, and then swing that rope all the way around. And that would actually make a great big circle on the ground. And, you know, it would look better than that, but that'd be a pretty good circle. In fact, it would look like a normal circle to me. Um, in fact, it would look like a circle I see from geometry class, you know, perfectly flat with all the properties of a circle I expect. That'd be great. Except I know that I'm really doing this on the surface of the Earth. And I happen to know the Earth isn't actually flat. It is actually a sphere. Uh, there's the Earth. I'll just choose a country at random. There's a country at random to show it's the Earth. Um, but there's the Earth. But I know something should be a little bit odd about that circle. But when I'm living on the Earth, everything feels and looks flat to me. So that circle would probably look normal to me if I go into my backyard. It looks like a circle I do in my geometry books. No worries. But let me get kind of crazy. Instead of doing a circular Earth, let's actually play this game for a cubical Earth. Imagine the Earth was actually the shape of a cube. Here's a big cube. And suppose I played this game again, drawing circles. And one thing I could do, maybe I'd choose a point on the center in the, uh, one of the front faces one of the faces there. If I took a little rope and pulled it taut and swung, swung it around, that would actually make a circle. And that would just feel normal and good. There's nothing strange about that circle. Would, if, it's, if it's small enough, they'll feel like a normal flat circle for my geometry books. Great. If I choose a point on the edge, however, things get a little bit interesting. Imagine I had a rope and I pulled it taut. I could swing it around and that looked like a half a circle. But actually, I know there's a kink there, but I can still pull my rope taut and swing it around. So I get a circle like that. I mean, it's a still, still a full 360 degrees all the way around. I mean, that was 360 degrees all the way around. That's also 360 degrees all the way around. It's just got a kink in it. But if I make the center a corner point, things are really weird. If I actually pull a piece of rope taut, swing it around, go through 90 degrees. Swing it around, go through 90 degrees. Swing it around, go through 90 degrees. And then I'm back to where I started. So that was a full 360 degrees. There was 180 and 180. That's also a full 360 degrees. But this one is only 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and 90 degrees. I would actually see there's something fundamentally different about that circle if I use the corner of the center. In fact, that is missing 90 degrees of turning. It's missing a quarter of a turn. It's missing a quarter of a turn. And in some sense, you say, well, that's because I've got like the, the point here, with this, corny, this corner pointy bit. Okay, so I've got this pointy bit right there. That corner is kind of pointy. But I'm gonna call that fraction there the pointiness of the corner. It has a pointiness of a quarter. It's missing a quarter of a circle. So its degree of pointiness is one quarter. This is missing no degrees. So its pointiness is zero, which makes sense. I guess something with zero pointiness should be flat. That feels flat. And this one actually is missing nothing. It's missing zero degrees. It's got its full 360s. So that's equally, uh, that's its pointiness is also zero. So right now I can say a point like that has zero pointiness. It's a bit weird, but that has also zero pointiness. But the corner definitely has some pointiness. It has a pointiness of a measure of one quarter. In fact, that also, that corner there has pointiness of one quarter. A quarter of a turn is missing. 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 And a quarter of a turn is missing. Everywhere else, the pointiness is zero, but at eight places, the pointiness is a quarter. So I'm gonna say the total pointiness of my cube is the sum of all the pointiness I see, all the zeros, all the zeros, all the zeros, but there'll be a quarter there, plus 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 a quarter, eight quarters makes two. The total pointiness of a cube, I'm gonna say is two. I add up the pointiness of each individual point. It's mostly all zeros. It's only when it turns out eight points of, of, of influence. The total pointiness of a cube is two. Okay. Well, let me try a different shape. Let's try something like a regular tetrahedron, four equilateral triangular faces. So that, try and pretend that's a nice equilateral triangle. I think any point on a face has total pointiness zero. If I draw a circle around it, a small circle, I get the full 360 degrees, nothing's missing. If I draw a circle from the point on the edge, I get the full 180 and 180, I get the full 360 degrees, nothing's missing. The question is, 
but I do it at a corner. How many degrees are missing if I put a little work taught and went all the way around? And feel free to unmute yourself or type into the chat. Let me open up my chat as well. So if you want to use the chat, that's fine. How many degrees are missing from a circle at the corner? 180 degrees are missing. I agree, because that's 60, 60, and 60. 180, someone's about to say that loud as well. 60. Yep, 180 degrees is missing. That's half a turn is missing. Half a turn is missing from the corner. So what's the total pointiness of a tetra regular tetrahedron then? If I add up all the to total, all the pointiness, why it's two. I get a bunch of zeros, but I got four corners, each of value pointing as a half, four halves is two. Okay, okay, getting suspicious. Let me do something less regular. So we're doing a regular tetrahedron. Let me do a square pyramid, which I don't know if I can draw very well. Let's see if I can draw it very well. Okay, I'm gonna pretend each face is still an equilateral triangle. So I'll make my life easy. Each face is an equilateral triangle, so I've now got a square on the bottom. What's the total pointiness of this one? Can you figure it out? What if you brought pieces of paper with you? <laughs> well, I have some bits here. If you had to make a guess, I bet it's two, but uh, is it actually two? This one's 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees, and 60 degrees, adds up to 240. It's missing 120 degrees, which is a third of a turn. So that one's got a point of a third. These ones are a bit annoying. That's 60 degrees there. That's 60 degrees there. But it's also 90 degrees sort of under there. So it's currently adding up to 120 plus 90, that's 210. So it is missing 150 degrees. What fraction of a turn is that? Arithmetic is my downfall. I'm gonna fail on this part. Uh, 150 degrees, well, there's some fraction. Oh, it's 5 twelfths, thank you so much, 5 twelfths. So the total pointiness is gonna be one corner with a third and one, two, three corners of 5 twelfths. And what does that turn out to be? One third plus five thirds makes six thirds, which is two. Okay, total pointiness is two. Okay, okay, let me start getting unusual. Let's get quirky, let's get quirky. I'll take a cube again, but let me now shave off one of its corners. So let me start drawing a cube, start drawing a cube, but I'm gonna shave off one of its corners and make a tri equilateral triangle face. So my picture is now something like this. Do you see what I'm trying to draw there? So there's a chord. I'll make that nice for myself. 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. But I'll also make it so I went along the midpoint. So that's actually 135 degrees. So it's actually 45 degrees I chopped off. 135 degrees, 135 degrees, 135 degrees. What's the total pointiness of this shape? This will be a bit quicker for us. The total is still two, someone says in chat, Alyssa. All right, I agree. That was the uh, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees before. So that's still a quarter. That's still a quarter, still a quarter, still a quarter, still a quarter, still a quarter. So I've got total pointiness is uh, seven of those quarters, seven quarters, plus three of, oh, arithmetic, okay. Um, three of 100, 270 plus 60 makes 330. It's missing 30 degrees and 30 degrees is uh, one twelfth of a turn. It's missing one twelfth. So I've got three one twelfths. So seven quarters plus one quarter doth eight quarters make, it's two, it's two. So it looks like the total pointers of any shape is two. Even if I shave off a corner, it's two. I bet if I shave off this corner as well, I don't know how to draw that, goodbye, it's also gonna be two. I bet if I shave off this corner as well, it's still gonna be two. 
I bet I could keep shaving off corners. In fact, I could keep doing that. I could keep shaving off corners, I know how to draw this, and make it more, more sphere-like. But all these corners, keep shaving off corners, keep shaving off, keep shaving off, keep shaving off. Total point in this two, total point in this two, total point in this two. Keep shaving off until it's so close to being a sphere that the human eye couldn't tell the difference. I'm wondering if that's still two. Is the total point in this, no matter what it is, if I made it more, less and less cube-like, kept shaving off corners over and over again, maybe a sphere is just as pointy as a cube. Maybe, that's what I'm asking, how round is a cube? It's round as it's two, the same as a sphere. So that's what I want to do today. I want to know if any of the stuff I just said here is true. I mean, all I did was like three or four examples then made a conjecture. So our challenge today is try to make sense of total pointiness and see if it's always two, and then maybe argue that a sphere and a cube are equally round, they're equally pointy. Because that would be mind blowy and bendy. That sounds irresistible to me. All right, so let me do it, let's do it. But the thing is, I don't like what we're doing. Um, one thing you learn about mathematicians is that, in fact, this is my definition of mathematician. Someone who works very, very hard to avoid hard work. So I wanna see if I can avoid hard work. Adding up those angles, as you can tell, I was suffering. I was not able to good, do well, good things with my arithmetic. But let me go back to this complicated example again. And someone asked about convex. Yes, we should talk about that. I, I saw that in the chat. Alyssa is on top of the game here. All right, if you remember here, we had the angles 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 135 degrees, 135 degrees, 135 degrees, 135 degrees, 135 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and so on and so on and so on. And what I was doing to work out the total pointiness at some point, let's just analyze what I did. I said, okay, the pointiness right there at one particular point is gonna be uh, 360 degrees, take away the sum of the angles, 60 plus 60 plus, uh, plus 135, plus 135. That is, I looked at all the angles I had, add them all up, and said, what's missing? What's deficient? So I went 360, take away what I have. So that's what I'm really doing there. And then I do it, then I wanted what fraction of a turn that was. I wasn't actually working degrees, I was actually working in what fraction of 360 degrees it was. So I then divided everything by 360. So how I worked out a point in this was saying, okay, how many degrees are missing? And what fraction of 360 is that? So I literally say, worked out how many degrees are missing and asked what fraction of 360 is that? So what I'm really doing here is the pointiness equals 360 divided by 360, one, minus the sum of all the angles around the point divided by 360. That's what I'm really doing, okay? For the pointiness of one individual point, one individual corner. Actually, you might know from the article we sent out and what mathematicians do, they don't really call these corners, they tend to call these vertices. So the thing is, I'll do this formula for one vertex, I'll do this formula with the other vertex, I'll do the formula with the other vertex, do the other formula with the other vertex, and then add them all together. Of course, the total, total pointiness would be this formula for one corner, one vertex, one minus one 360 of the sum of all the angles, plus do it again for the next corner, one minus one 360 of the sum of all the angles, plus the next corner, one over 360, sum of all the angles, on and on and on. Oh, 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 think about this. One plus one plus one plus one for each corner. Let's suppose there are V vertices, just like the article did in the homework. If there are V of these corners, I'm adding the number one V times, I'll get V, one plus one plus one plus one plus one V times, minus one over 360, some of those angles, and some of those angles, and one of those, some, some, those angles. Sum up all these, I get a common factor of one over 360. And what I'm gonna do is sum all the angles there, and sum all the angles there, and sum all the angles there, I'm actually summing literally the sum of all possible angles, all angles overall. I've just verified that the total pointiness can be given by the number of vertices take away 1 360th of the sum of all angles you see. All right. All right. Sum of every possible angle. Just every possible angle C. Don't worry about what's around the corner because in, you know in the end you're going to be adding up all the angles. So add them all up. Divide by 360, the number of vertices take away that. That's still too hard. That makes my brain hurt. That's gonna be arithmetic. I don't like arithmetic. That's actually caused me troubles. But then I realized, oh, if I'm summing up all the angles, well, I know every triangular face 
is going to add up to 180 degrees. Every quadrilateral face, you don't see it, but it's like one of the back ones will add up to 360 degrees. Every pentagonal face will add up to 540 degrees. All those angles add to 540. All those are add to 180. So actually, actually, I know every triangular face I have gives me 180 degrees. Every quadrilateral face gives me 360 degrees. Every pentagonal face gives me 540. So that makes me think I should be counting the number of faces. Okay, okay, all right. My, my ball technique's getting lousily messy. So the total pointiness is the number of vertices minus 1 360th of the sum of all the angles you see. All right? But I know. I will let F3 be the number of triangular faces. Triangular faces. And F4 be the number of quadrilateral faces. And F5, the number of pentagonal faces. I don't know if you realize you also signed up for hieroglyphics today. Good luck trying to read my handwriting. So hopefully following what I'm saying is enough. And we'll keep going. All the hexagonal faces, all the septagonal faces, all the octagonal faces, and so on, and so on, and so on. But I know if I'm signing up for all the angles, I'll add up all the angles from the triangular faces. So the sum of all the angles would be 180 degrees for each triangular face. And if there's F3 of them, I'll get F3 times 180 degrees. Plus, I'll get 360 degrees for each quadrilateral face. If there's F4 of them, I'll get F4 groups 360 degrees. Plus, uh, 540 degrees times F5, and so on and so on. In fact, one thing you learn, uh, kids learn in you know, ninth, eighth, tenth grade, grade geometry, the angles of the triangle up to 180, chop a quadrilateral into two triangles, they must have to 360. You can chop, chop up a, pen, a pentagon, pentagon into three triangles, three 180s, and so on. So this is really 180 degrees times F3 plus two F4s plus three F5s, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, okay, I'm liking this because I can take that formula for all the angles and put it in there. And now I'm going to put in my total pointiness. My total pointiness is going to be the number of vertices, vertices minus, or oh, I'm off the screen for this exciting part. Oh, it doesn't fit. Oh no. The formula for all the angles divided by 360, the formula for the sum of all the angles divided by 360. So 180 divided by 360 is a half times F3 plus twice F4 plus three times F5 and so on and so on. This is making me happy. There's no mention of angles anymore. All I have to do is see how many triangles I have on my polyhedron. How many quadrilaterals do I have on my polyhedron? How many pentagons do I have on my polyhedron? Just count how many faces you have of each type and shove it into that formula. The total pointiness is that. This is feeling really, really good. Except we can do better. We can do way better. Because that formula looks really complicated still to me. The number of triangles plus twice the number of quadrilaterals plus three times the number of pentagons. That seems crazy to me. In fact, the reason I'm hesitating there is this sum reminds me of something else. Reminds me of something else. Okay, okay, here goes. F3 is the number of triangular faces. All right, each triangular face has three edges. F4 is the number of quadrilateral faces. Each quadrilateral has four edges. F5 is the number of pentagonal ones. Each, pent each, pent each pentagonal face has five edges. Oh, three edges for each triangle, plus four edges for each quadrilateral, plus five edges for each pentagon, plus six edges for each hexagon, must be equal to what? Your turn, what must that equal? What's a nice way to think of that? Number of edges? It must be the number of edges. Three edges for the triangles and four edges for each quadrilateral is the number of edges. Can I just write E for the number of edges? Aren't we double counting though? But we might be double counting, bother. Okay, you're right, we are so double counting. Because look, this edge here, would have been counted once as part of that triangle, one of the three edges of the triangle, and it would have been counted once as one of the edges of the pentagon. You're right, you're on the game. We're actually doubling it. We're actually double counting the edges. That's annoying, that's annoying. Well, so be it, okay, so be it. However, that looks similar to this, 
but it doesn't look the same as it. Do you have any thoughts on how I might have to use this fact to help me out make that look simpler? Any thoughts on how I can make that red formula about the number of faces look simpler given the green fact we just figured out? Oh, V minus one quarter of it. Okay, Mark says something in chat. I have no idea where it's coming from. His, his brain is brilliant than mine. Okay, Mark, can you, can you help me out with your with that? Because that sounds something very clever would happen then. What happened then? Um, I just used the starting the TP formula, total points. Yep, total well, pointiness. V, which I don't even remember what that stands for, the number of... Uh, Vertices. Corners, vertices. Corners, you yeah. so got it. You're so got it. This is a speed masterclass in math. This is going to hurt our brains, but you got it. The jargon notation, you're on top of it. All right. Yep. It was good. And then because I totally didn't get that double the edges until she said that. And I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. But because it's double, in order to undouble it, you divide Ooh. it by two. And the yep. other one, and you already have to divide it by two. So one Ooh. half, one half, one fourth. I see, what, I see what you're saying. Okay. Um, my only hesitation, because here in the red, I've got one F3, two F4s, three F5s. Here I've already got three F3s, four F4s, and five F5s, and so on. So let me, okay, let me take what you just said. Okay, part of what you said is there. If I want to get that, let me just write it. That's F3 plus two F4s plus three F5s plus four F6, and so on, equals twice the edges. That's what you said except really there's an extra two F3s still to deal with. Am I right? There should have been three of them. And there's actually an extra two F4s to deal with because there should have been four of them. And there's an extra two F5s to deal with because there should have been five of them. And there's an extra two F6 to deal with because there should have been six of them. All right. So I'm with you. I'm taking your thinking. At least that part is in the TP formula, the total pointers formula, but I've got this extra stuff that's hanging there. Ugh, oh, bother. This is, this is math. I have, you, you do this all the time in math. You, you get somewhere, you have a brilliant idea, you think you're on a good track, and then it's just this annoying bit that won't fall into place. Brilliant ideas can just fall into obstacles. So we've just got an obstacle. Unless there's any meaning to that. It's twice the number of faces. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Remember... F3 is the number of triangular faces. F4 is the number of, tri number of quad faces. F5 is the number of pentagonal faces. So if I just add these numbers together, that must be total number of faces. I might just call that F, just like the article did. That's the total number of faces. This is the total pointiness. This is the total number of edges doubled. I've now lost track of everything. This is too much of a mess. Let me write, let, let me be neat. Time for me to be, try to be neat. This is, this is a challenge for me. Okay. Our total pointiness is, so you can't see it, but I'm copying down what we had. V minus one half F3 plus two F4 plus three F5 and so on. We just saw that F3 plus F4 plus F5 and so on is the total number of faces. We also had that uh, F3 plus F, whoops, 2F4 plus 3F5 plus, plus 2F3s plus 2F4s plus 2F5s and so on is double the number of edges. They're the three facts we've got. Let's put them together. Well, right away, we are seeing F3 plus 2F4s plus 3F5s forever plus two times that plus double the number of faces is double the number of edges. Yay. Yay. I'm, I'm getting all jittery because I'm pretty excited. I think things are going to fall into place. Look what's happening. The total pointiness wants just that part. So what is that part then? What's this part all by itself? We double the number of faces and then we subtract 
uh, 2e or the other way around. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So this part all by itself must be 2e. Ah, take away double number of faces. Exactly right. This must be 2e, take away the double number of faces. Oh, I like this so much better. So the total pointiness must be total pointiness of a cube or any shape is V minus half of double E minus E minus half of minus two F plus F. Do you know what? I don't have to do any fussy measuring. I don't have to even mention angles. Because it turns out all you have to do is count how many vertices you have, how many corners you have, how many edges you have, and how many faces of any size you have. There's no fussiness. You don't have to do any fuss. Don't even do angles. Don't even do, care about whether you've got triangles or squares or whatever faces you've got. This is amazing. The total pointiness is the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of faces. That is shocking to me, actually. That's shocking. Let me check it. For the cube, we had vertices, corners, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Edges, uh-oh, how many edges do we have? Twelve. Twelve, thank you. How many faces do we have of any type? But well, they will have to be the same. Is it, is it six? Okay. okay, excellent. So the total point, is, par, par, total point is apparently is eight minus 12 plus six. Please be two. Is it two? Yes. It's two. Don't you have to measure an angle. All the pointiness adds up to two. All this idea of just seeing how deficient circles are at different corners, doesn't matter. Don't have to even measure angles. Don't have to measure the circles. It's two. Um, we did another one. What about that square pyramid? It was actually hard to figure out all the angles of this one. Well, how many vertices does it have? How many edges does it have? How many faces does it have? That's all we need to ask, apparently. Five, eight, and five. Can someone just confirm that? Because I can't count quickly under pressure. Is that right? Please say yes, someone else. Yes. Yes, yes excellent. Total pointiness, I claim then, is five, take away eight plus five. Please be two. Is it two? Yes. Whoa, whoa. That's amazing. Oh, at one point, I was shaving off corners. Shaving off corners. That is, let me take this square pyramid. I'll just do the square pyramid again. Oops, sorry, should be background. What if I shaved off a corner? How am I gonna draw this? This is gonna be hard for me to draw. Oh, that's not too bad. Do you see what I was trying to draw there? Okay, okay. Now let's see if we can do this abstractly. We had V, we had E, we had F there, all right? Now, how has V, E, and F changed over here? Example, I definitely got rid of that vertex. I, the vertex is left me down by at least one. I at least got rid of one vertex. However, what did I also do in that process? I created these four. Yeah. So really I got rid of one, but I also added four. Okay. Tell me about the edges. How did the number of edges change in this process? Increased by four. Increased by four, is that right? Did I lose any edges? No. no, I mean, it looks like, no. you know, I might've lost something up here, but actually it really was part of that edge. I just lost part of an edge, but I'm still counting one edge there. So that still counts. I didn't lose any edges by taking that away, but I created four. I added these four here. Okay. And what's happened to the number of faces? Added one. Added one. You added one. You added one. That was it, wasn't it? That's the only thing that's changed. So tell me, here I had V minus E plus F was my total pointiness. Over here, I have total pointiness would be my new V minus my new E plus my new F. No change. You notice, no change. Oh, e no change. minus E plus, plus F, no change. Shaving off that corner created no change. Shave away, nothing's gonna to happen to you. In fact, in general, in general, let's be very specific. Suppose I shaved off a corner know how to draw this with uh, 
leaving a face like this, K edges. You see what I'm trying to draw? So suppose I took off something that created a face with K edges. Let's be really abstract. Let's be very clear. So I just did one very specific example with four, we left a face with four edges. In general, if I leave a face with K edges, what happens to the number of vertices? How does that change? You add K and take away one. Right, got rid of that one and I put in, each edge has a, matches a vertex. Yep, added K, you're right. To be really clear on the number of edges, what happened there? We're adding K. Is it really add K? Yep, I believe we added K because all these edges really did keep going down. So they would have counted there before and they still count here. Yep. And faces? Add one. Add one. Tell me about V minus E plus F over here for the total pointiness compared to the total points over here. Is everything balancing out? It's the same. It's the same. So in general, shaving off faces is not gonna change the total pointiness. So everything I was saying earlier on must be true. You start with the cube and you shave off a corner somehow and then shave off another corner like I did there and then shave off another corner and shave off another corner and shave off another corner. The total point is this two, total point is this two, total point is this two, total point is this two. I can get to something that's so sphere-like, I'm gonna argue that the total point is a sphere is just the same as a cube. Because I can approximate a sphere arbitrarily closely by these, these polyhedron with flat faces, if you like, and bingo, in the limit, the total pointiness is still two. In fact, this is the kind of thing that folks in the 1800s, Gauss and uh, 18th century and 1800s, were actually thinking about all the time. We've actually found our way to Gaussian curvature. We're actually talking about Gaussian curvature. And it turns out this famous formula that that article was talking about which is known as Euler's polyhedral formula, though it's in doubt whether it's actually uh, solely due to Euler. Certainly Descartes was doing some work beforehand. It was very close to writing that down to the point that he may, may have actually written it down. I think the author of the, the previous article I sent actually claimed it is due to Descartes. But anyhow, Euler was definitely like clinched these ideas. This actually is a measure of the, of the curvature of the polyhedron. All right, except, 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 except. Someone in the chat was being very clever and asked me a question early on, but what about things that aren't nice like cubes and convex and so forth? And in fact, even the article in the, in the pre-homework asked about this sort of thing. Tell me about the total pointiness of a cube, but with a hole in it. Oops, my camera's not well, well focused. Imagine, like, do you see what I'm trying to draw there? Okay, tell me about the total pointiness of that shape. What do you think is going on there? It would be the, maybe the total pointiness of the cube plus the total pointiness of the cutout. Okay, <laughs> so total pointiness of the cube plus the total pointiness of the anti-cube cutout. Is that right? Um, yeah. Well, we know, we know that's two. Well, the other would be two also, wouldn't it? Or maybe it's anti-two. Anti-two, okay. <laughs> or two, I don't know which. So it's either four or zero, apparently. If you've got one conjecture, it's either four or zero. I, I wonder which. Think we're gaining a quarter of a turn, yes, with each new uh, vertex. And with the initial vertices, we were missing a quarter of a turn. So they were kind of offset each other. So I would Ooh. go for zero. Okay, so let's go back to, I love this. So here, if I go back to the very first principles, draw a circle as best you can by putting a little rope taut. That's 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. It's missing 90 degrees. So it's missing a quarter of a turn. So it's pointing us there as a quarter. How much is that missing? Has an extra 90. Has an extra 90, therefore it's missing how much? Negative one quarter. Yeah, I know it's, it's kind of way to think about. It. It's missing negative ninety degrees. It's missing negative a quarter. Oh, I think you're right. Somehow that cor uh, that corner and this corner, the total point is are anti versions of each other. So I think Jim is right. It really should be two and actually anti two in some sense. In which case the total pointiness is zero. Zero. 
Oh, now let's check them. V, E, and F. How many vertices are there? How many edges are there? How many faces are there? There's 16 vertices. 16, okay. If someone disagrees, yell out, yell out, because I haven't actually counted. All right, how many edges are there? Uh, well, someone says 12. 24. For... 24. Is it 24? Okay, 24. Oh, yeah. And how many faces are there? 12? No. Six. Ten? Ten. Six, seven, eight. <laughs> Yeah, should I take the average? Of, should I take? Should I take the average of twelve and ten? Should just say eleven. <laughs> just okay. Is it ten? It's actually ten. Ten. It's ten because of the cut pieces at the edges. Okay, ten. All right. So the total point of this should be v minus e plus f. Negative two. V minus e plus f. I can't do arithmetic. Twenty six take away twenty four. Two. Two. Hang on, I thought it was zero. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. By first principles, when we actually went back to how we were actually measuring point in this, it, zero is the correct answer from first principles. From advanced principles, we're getting two. Uh-oh, what's gone wrong? What's well, gone, my beautiful theory, it's gone out the window. So who, who was it in the chat that asked about convex shapes? This is definitely not a convex polygon. Does your conjecture apply only to convex polyhedra? It's Alyssa. Alyssa, the, I guess the answer is no. We've got a terrible mismatch. Everything's falling apart. Unless we can salvage this, what are we missing? Just use the number of holes. Use the number of holes in what sense? Like, you know, I, I don't know if it works in general, but <laughs> just like plus, you know, two times the number of holes. Right, there's a very famous theory in algebraic <laughs> topology, you know, V two minus two G, you have the genus and all the rest. Okay, um, yeah, I say people have tried to fix this up. People have tried to fix this up. Um, okay, let me, let me point something out because, you know, this is a very much a speed lecture. We went from first principles and I said, I don't like adding up angles. I can't do arithmetic. And I went through a whole lots of preamble of algebra to come up with this general theory. And the way I did that is I looked at the number of triangular faces, number of, um, number of quadrilateral faces, number of pentagonal faces, number of hexagonal faces, and so on. All right. The trouble is, I think we've got new types of faces here. I mean, there's a triangular face. There's a quadrilateral face. Here's a pentagonal face. Here's a hexagonal face. But this time, I've got a face with a hole in it, which I wasn't doing, wasn't considering in my previous considerations. In fact, I even said the angles here up to 180, the angles here up to 360, the angles here up to 560, 540, which I know is true in basic geometry. Shapes with holes in them are kind of annoying. So technically, the work I was doing before doesn't apply to that polyhedron. Because I was only talking about strictly triangular, quadrilateral, pentagonal faces and all the rest. So right now, this introduced new types of faces. So either that means I have to consider a whole theory about Triangular faces with holes, triangular faces without holes, quadrilateral faces with holes and without holes. I have to like really extend the theory. But I'm a mathematician. That sounds like hard work. I don't want to do that. Someone says we're taking off two faces. I guess we did, but also didn't we add some faces, like four faces in the middle? This is really hard. This is really hard. I like that thinking very much. So what could we do to somehow salvage this theory to correspond to what we did before? Could we flatten it out to be a net and think about the, the two-dimensional representation of the kind with and without a hole? I kind of love that. Okay, so, so if I could imagine this is made of rubber and then I can start, somehow like, you know, puncture the rubber, put a little hole in there and then like stretch it out and make the rubber flat on the ground, would the rubber go flat on the ground? And I'm looking at your faces. I'm getting a lot of screwed looking, you know, skewy looking look, looks here. So I don't think anyone thinks it does go flat on the ground. Whereas I know, I know you're right. If I didn't have a hole, I took this cube, 
Imagine it was made of rubber, punctured it, and then flattened this out. I bet I could like, I've got a big flat rubber here and I could kind of see the edges will have to do something like this, which I believe is what the article did, actually did that sort of thing. Like uh, here's the boundary of my hole, but here's now the boundary of the hole. That one I believe I can flatten out. It's this, this donut shape, this hole, holy shape that's throwing me. I don't know if that flattens on the ground. Otherwise that's a brilliant idea. I think it's a lovely idea. I just don't think it's gonna work here. Bother, this is mathematics. You had brilliant idea after brilliant idea and turns out not to be helpful. Oh, oh. It's called doing a PhD in maths, by the way, or any research in maths. It's always that way. Um, okay, yeah. But I was going to ask, is it true? So I mean, if every hole like has an entry point and an exit point, mm -hmm. then like you can think of like this anti-polyhedron, this idea that Ellie mentioned of taking off two yes. faces. Like, oh yeah, the the two faces, yep. So like we've got like this, this rectangular prism or something that is the hole in here, but it's missing the two faces that are- Oh, oh, oh I see, I'll, I'll, I'll beg your pardon. Now I understand that comment. Right, yes, everything that belongs to that rectangular prism is in there, except the two faces that belong to it are missing. You're right, so we're off by two faces. Now I understand what you meant. Okay, that could account for the difference of two in some sense. Is that what you're saying then? Yeah, I'm wondering okay. if every hole would, would cause that shape to be off by two for the that entry. Is, it, okay, that is a beautiful theory and I bet you can make that work. That is actually gorgeous. Sorry, I did not understand that comment, Ellie, beforehand. Beg your pardon. But that is beautiful. Okay. Two minus two times the number of holes might actually be the sort of thing we're doing here. All right. All right. I love it. You guys are beyond belief awesome. I'm so impressed. Um, let me just, uh, just, just for the completeness here, you, you're correct, by the way. I think you're good. Um, let me show you what Euler did. Euler came up with a very clever way to, to fix this problem because he is aware of this problem too. And he said, well, okay, if you insist that all our faces have to be regular shapes from like a ninth grade geometry class. There's a very simple way to make that work here. Just draw in some extra edges. Eh, 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 eh. And do it on the back. I mean, there's a square face. There's a quadrilateral. There's a quadrilateral. There's a quadrilateral. There's a quadrilateral. Technically that's now got, um, uh, it's got uh, nothing but the faces I want. There's no holes in any of the faces anymore. Now, that means our numbers probably changed. I mean, I still believe it's 16 vertices. I didn't change the number of vertices. I think I've changed the number of edges. So what's the new number of edges? And I did change the number of faces because now I've added like this one hole, we can't, this, this one region we're calling one face before is now four faces. So the numbers E and F are going to adjust. So what's the new number of edges? Is it 32? I don't know. Can someone confirm that? Because I don't know, actually. Yep. I can't count. 32. That was a confident, yep, I'm going to say yes. How many faces are there now? Sixteen. 16. All right. Now, V minus E plus F, the total pointiness that did match our theory, that does go along with the primitive ideas, is it back to what we want it to be? V plus F is 32, minus E, take away 32, bingo. Now you're in touch with it. Now you're in touch with it. And it does absolutely right, correspond to the number of holes in it, because Euler managed to prove that V minus E plus F will always be two minus two times the number of holes. We had one hole, and in some sense you're right, we had like, we took away two faces, we're off by two faces because that one hole, bingo. Two minus two times one hole gets you to zero. The total pointness is zero. And the total point is zero. It doesn't mean you don't have pointiness, but we had both positive pointiness and negative pointiness that cancelled each other out. Bingo. Welcome to the theory of, 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 uh, of, of um, curvature of surfaces. This is really a discrete version of the curvature of surfaces. And if you want to take a calculus approach, we're going to approximate a surface like a whole bunch of little triangulation flat faces. Bingo. Welcome to something called the order characteristic of those surfaces. Gotta love it. That's grand. But, but you're right. Euler did manage to observe that V minus E plus F equals two only for those convex polyhedra without holes. And the way I like to phrase it was not how the article did it. It was actually how, uh, I'm sorry, I think it was Sharon who said it. She said, imagine it was made of rubber and you could spread that rubber flat. What I'm gonna say is, first of all, imagine it's made of rubber. Oh, camera, camera, don't, don't fail me in the last few minutes. Imagine it's made of rubber, but blow some air on the inside. And that's gonna make this thing expand like a balloon. Basically, it's gonna be spherical in some sense. 
though I should actually not draw the sphere. I'll have the cube on it like this, the cube with the top face up like this. I can't draw it very well, but you have a spherical balloon, like a polyhedron with its edges drawn on the surface of a sphere. Then you can do that, flat it, flatten it out and get this sort of shape, just like the article did, just like, uh, like Sharona suggested. Brilliant. Euler managed to prove any shape that can be blown up into basically a sphere is going to have the property that B minus E plus F equals two. Turns out to be those shapes that don't have holes in it. So yes, does this only apply to convex polyhedra? Yes, the two only applies to convex polyhedra. And that's how Euler proved it. That's how it was proven in that article I shared with you. But do you know what? You've now raised a very interesting question. You've raised, I love this. Here's a sphere. Imagine it is made of rubber. I can imagine punching a little hole in it. This, this camera's not working too well right now. Okay, come on camera, camera behave. And imagine I started pulling out that rubber, like stretching it out. So here's the sphere. I'm now like teasing out the rubber a little bit. You see what I'm trying to draw there? Like I'm just opening up the hole. In fact, let me keep opening up the hole. Let me imagine you keep stretching that hole open over itself. I'm gonna start bringing that, that hole kind of over itself. You see how I'm trying to draw there? You see how I'm trying to bring that rubber back over itself? And if I kept bringing it all the way over, can you see how I end up with something like this? Turning a sphere inside out gives me another sphere. Sphere inside out gives me a sphere. You were essentially asking me moments ago about turning, not a sphere inside out, but basically a donut. It's basically a donut shape. I mean, it's a very cubical donut. A donut. So imagine I had a donut. I took a hole, punctured it, made it rubber. Let me start opening up the hole. Start bringing that hole back over itself. I'm going to draw this. What do you get in the end? Can you turn a donut inside out? And if you do, what do you get? If you can't, the question's moot. Could be like, you can't. A sphere? A sphere? Oh, that would be interesting because then if I get a sphere, I like that answer because then I could unfold, I mean, unreverse it, which is basically turn a sphere inside out again. And I'll go back to the beginning. Oh, I could turn a sphere into a donut, a donut into a sphere. Hmm, that's an interesting idea. All right, so my time is basically up, but, but I'm gonna just say you can actually do this if you like at home. Here's how you do it at home. Um, this is optional homework. So this means don't do it under any circumstance. If you're a student, I mean, optional means don't do it. Take an old pair of trousers. That is, here's a pair of trousers. A pair of trousers you don't care about. Then you've got this waist opening here and you've got these two leg openings here. Get out some sewing, get out a sewing kit and sew those two leg openings together. You see what I'm trying to draw there? There's the two leg openings together. You now have a donut with a hole in it, all right? You can actually turn that inside out. You can physically do it because I have actually sewn some trouser legs openings together. Make sure you actually put your arm through it. Make sure it really is a donut. You can actually reach your arm in there and you can yank that material through itself and you will get another shape, which is the answer to this question. So if you, this is gonna drive you bonkers, just find an old pair of trousers and physically try it. You can turn a donut inside out. And I would like to know tomorrow in an email, what the shape is. Is it another sphere? Is it another donut? Is it a Klein bottle as someone suggests? What is it we've got? Such mystery, such delight. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you're on a Friday, you're on a, an evening after a long day of work with this heavy intense lesson of maths. But what I love, I never learned this in my graduate school days. No one ever taught me that V minus E minus plus F is actually just the pointiness of the shape you're dealing with. I've never seen that. Never seen it until just, I don't know, a couple of months ago or something like that. Just so that this was, a, I know this is a very fast paced lesson. I did actually make a video about all this. So what, if you were ever wondering about what on earth just happened today, let me put in the chat right now, I'll stop sharing, put in the chat right now, a video of everything I've just done. So you don't have to panic and you can see it again at your leisure or if this was just too horrific and painful for you, um, you can just ignore this chat item as well. So let me just get the link 
Great, I'm on the link. Let me go back to Zoom. And while I'm fussing, let me ask, do you have any questions or thoughts or concerns or worries that you'd like to share in these last three minutes or two minutes? I have a question about angles. I know you're excited to get rid, uh, rid of the angles in the <laughs> equation. And it got me thinking, I, I, you know, like we have a rule for uh, how we find the angles of a polygon. I, I don't know if, the, if there's such a rule for a polyhedra, but based on the work you share, can we say that they always sum up to a multiple of 360? So that's very interesting. So um, uh, they sum up to, well, what do they sum up to? But yes, they do. They, they, well, they mod modulo the total pointiness. The total pointiness yeah. tells you how much is missing. So yes, it's going to be a whole bunch of 360s, but what's missing from the total point? So yes, you can actually have a formula for the angles on the faces of a poly poly polyhedron. Yes. What's most, but there's a notion of a three-dimensional angle as well, because in two dimensions, an angle is just a measure the amount of turning. It's like a, how much of a section of a circle do you have? So the three-dimensional version of that, if I'm at a corner, how much of a section of a sphere do I have? So that'll be the, that'll be the, the um, spherical angle, if you like. And that varies. There's no standard formula for the number of um, what the total sum of the spherical angles of the polyhedron is, because polyhedra tend to be floppy. You can actually like move them in and out. They can flex around a bit too much. Yeah, I was just referring yes. to the angles of the faces, the one. Uh, yes. And then so, so if, we, if we have the vertices and we subtract two times three sixty, then we get the sum of the angles of the faces. Is that? Yeah. So I, so I don't have it in my head, but you're so close there. I think you just give yourself a homework assignment. Make sure how that formula translates into multiples of 360 for the total sum of angles, and you'll be onto it. Because that TP is really the number of vertices minus the total num, num, amount missing from 360 of all the angles. So it's there. That What you're asking for is encoded in there. I just don't have the details in my head, but you're, you've got it. So I think you just need to sit down with the back of an envelope and nut it out tonight. Okay. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Awesome. Beautiful. That's maths. That's maths. You're doing maths. Of course. Brilliant. All right. In the chat oh is gosh. the YouTube video, and I thank you so much for being so patient and kind with me and letting me just prattle on about a subject I think is actually just kind of full of mysteries and delights and joys. Thank you. Well, and James Tanton, I have to say that you risk destroying an identity of mine that is built on being a non-math person. So <gasps> I want to say that's pretty blowing my mind. That was wonderful. Um, oh, so I want to thank you so much for being with us today and for all of you teachers being here. Teachers, we will see you in one week. Um, you have an email on its way to you that tells you your homework for next week. But James, this was just a fantastic day. Thank you so much for being with us. And, um, and we'll see all you teachers next week. James, do you want to send your Thank email so people can hand in oh. that assignment of the pants? <laughs> Very yes, good. I, I, need, I need you to email me a pair of sewn trousers, mutilated trousers, yes. <laughs> Excellent. All right. I will help you out. If you really are stuck, I'm happy to help out. So no worries. So my email is tanton.math at gmail.com. So my last name, dot math. Are you going to tell us you... the trick? I'm sorry. The math salute. Okay, anyone who wants to stay on for the math salute, I'll give it away if you want. I've got an extra few minutes. Is that okay for people who want to stay on for an extra few minutes if they wish? No obligation. All right. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> feel free to, to leave now. Here comes the intentional math salute. Arms out front, right over left. Good, my video is working this time. I don't know how she saw me before. I felt, felt bad about that. Palm to palm, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Come on back, and I make it look so easy. So what am I doing? I'm obviously doing something very different. And obviously the wiggle part is, not, is just a decoy. So let me show you what goes on. Arms out front, right over left. There's no cheating there. Raise my right hand and my left hand. But here's the thing. When most people go palm to palm, we humans love symmetry. We share twirl our thumbs in opposite directions and do that, which is wrong. That's not what I'm doing. I'm actually twirling my thumbs in parallel to my left. Now, I think your image is different but it's to my left. So let me show you very slowly what I'm doing. So arms out front, right over left. One hand at a time, your top hand, your thumb is currently up. It's gonna turn 180 degrees and point downwards and just do it. There's no tricks with the top hand. No tricks there. All the tricks are with the bottom hand. Currently, my left hand has its thumb pointing up. I'm going to turn it so my thumb is pointing downwards, 180 degrees. But I'm going to turn it the direction it feels completely wrong. My thumb towards the palm, it feels wrong. And she had my thumb touch my palm, it feels wrong. It feels wrong. Keep going down the palm, it feels so wrong. Ow, ow, ow. ow. It really hurts. <laughs> yes, it really hurts. But then I'm set to come on back. <laughs> Whoa. So one. 
along the palm and back. All right, so now your real homework is to practice that 20 times in a row tonight. You can do, continue to do it as smoothly as me and then spread amongst all your classrooms tomorrow. <laughs> if I ever come visit one of your schools, you know I'm gonna ask your kids, do you know the math salute? And then they say, they better say two things. Yes, I do. And let me show it to you. That's what I want them to say. Deal? Oh my God. Deal. The answer <laughs> Absolutely. is yes. Deal. All right. Oh Thanks, my everyone. gosh. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank Real you. Bye-bye. <laughs>